I said, I understand you, and I think you understand me, but I'll tell you in Arabic, Hamam, why don't you put him in the toilet? He just looked at me like I was crazy. He said, why you said this? I said, because at least you could wash it off. Because the public school in my country has degraded down, deteriorated down to such a level, it's not fit to put children in anymore. And I warned him again. Because we had schools that he could put his child in, but he was determined. Back home, that looks so good. My son's in American public school. The sad news is, I was right. And I wish I would be wrong. About seven years later, after I moved up to Washington, D.C., the same brother had moved not very far from me. He called me on the phone, I got to talk to you. Please come to my house immediately. I went, and I had a brother with me, and we went, and on the way over, I was telling him the same story I just told you. Huh? Same story. I just told him, you know, when I met this guy, I told him, put your kid in the toilet, it's better than public school. When we got there, the brother gave us the best hospitality. We sat on the floor, drank the coffee, and while we're sitting there, he said, okay, do you remember the first words you ever said to me seven years ago when you met me? I said, yeah, I do very well. I was just telling him. I'm surprised you remember. He said, well, you were wrong. I said, okay. Actually, I'm glad. I've been wrong before. He said, no, you were really wrong. I said, okay. He said, you should have told me it's ten times better to put him in a toilet than to put him in the school. I've lost my son. What should I say? What should I do? He started crying. We talked about it. We found many problems. Most of them related to the fact that the father just didn't get it in his mind. You can't do it like that. Islam has a prescribed way for everything. Everything. And if you follow it, it will work. If you don't, you're on your own. Yes or no? Does that make sense? All right. How do we raise our children? Let's start with that. First of all, from the time they're born, does Islam tell us what to do when they're born? And then a certain few days later, that we take the hair of the head and weigh it, cut it, weigh it, and give an equal amount of charity of silver. The point isn't about the fic. The point is to look and ask, what am I supposed to be doing when my child is born? What am I supposed to be doing? And don't we have a celebration? Huh? We have a celebration where we bring the people and feed them and tell them, oh, we have a child that was born. Yeah. But we find today people are ignoring that. Instead, we celebrate their birthday. Were we told to celebrate their birthday? No. We were told to celebrate their birth. Did we do that? No. And then we wonder why there's a problem later. And as long as you're going to celebrate the birthday, well, you've got to bring a cake, you've got to have ice cream, you've got to have candles. Never mind that those candles are coming from another religion. But you didn't know that, so it doesn't really matter, does it? What's happening to us? What's happening to us? The way that we raise our children up and they're not seeing us. And when they do see us, we're not really following Islam. How are we going to explain that on the Day of Judgment? Do you expect that you could just drop your children off at a Muslim school in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon, and magically they're going to be the model Muslim? Is this really what you think? The Islamic International School here is probably one of the best Muslim schools on the planet, especially for those who have the English language and are trying to learn. I'm serious. But at the same time, if you really thought that's all it takes, how? How could you think that? You are responsible for your own children. The teachers are there to give them some message, but it's up to you to really follow through when they come home every day. When was the last time you sat with your children and helped them with the homework? When? When? When was the last time you sat with them and just listened to them talk about their day? No, you're too busy talking about your day. Or even worse, too busy watching television. Of course, if they're watching Peace TV, that's different. 
<laughs> we'll make that exception immediately. But even Peace TV, it has some good things, but certainly you wouldn't leave your child parked in front of that television set all day long. This isn't reality. This conference that we're holding right now, this is so important for us to have this chance to be with each other and talk and share questions and answers, especially when Dr. Zacher comes out and really give you some good answers. But still, that's not our dean. If you just live all year long for the next conference, that's not our dean. Our dean is what? Some people said it's our religion. These are people that don't understand Arabic. Or else they don't understand English. Or both. Dean is your way of life. Everybody has a dean. Not everybody has a religion. Dean is all-encompassing. You have religion inside of dean. There is a place inside of dean for religion, for worship, for ibadah. But everything for the Muslim is dean. Yes or no? We have to think about it. And to raise these children properly, we've got to plant the seeds the right way. Let me give you an example. Another time in Maryland, I was given a talk, and I know the brothers there are pretty good. We're friendly with each other. And so when I tease them, they understand where I'm coming from. They don't see it as I'm really picking on anybody. So we had a Father Sunday. Somebody made up an idea of Father Sunday. I don't know why, but they did. And it's on Sunday. The, anyhow, so we've got the fathers, we've got the sons, everybody's there. I don't know why we didn't have any daughters, but whatever. Then, what well, they were all sitting there waiting for my talk. I said, before we get started, can I ask a question? Yeah. Who will sell me their son? Huh? Who will sell me their son? What's he talking about? Okay, how much is your son worth to you? They're like, there's no amount of money. No, your son, you got a price on him. No way. $100. Oh, $1,000. Ah, a million dollars. No, no, no. How much? Tell me the price. And they were all, oh, I'd never sell my son and so and so, you know. And the kids are looking at dad like, what's this guy talking about? Then I said, okay. How many of you took a part-time job? How many of you worked late at night for extra money, or you worked on Saturday or Sunday when the kids were home, how many of you, you did that? Everybody. I said, and who took care of your children while you were working? Oh, some babysitter, or they're old enough, they take care of themselves, they don't need anybody, they're eight years old, they're 10 years old, they don't need anything, yeah, they're okay. We only left them about eight or nine hours, no big deal. We left food on the stove, they're okay. And I told them, how much did you get? Twenty dollars? Twenty-five? Fifty? Fifty? A hundred? hundred? hundred twenty-five? Do I hear one fifty? One fifty? One seventy-five? Because what you did, you auctioned your kids off the same way. Whatever money you made, that's how much you sold them for. Because when you were not with them, you were not living up to your responsibility as a parent. The amana that was given to you by Allah. You say, yeah, but I needed the money for my family. Your family looks to me like you got a new Rolex on your arm. What's that got to do with your family? Looks to me like you got a new Game Boy set over here. You got a new computer over there. Putting new tires on the car, jazzing up this and that and get... And worst of all, making payments on the house you got on Reba. Audhu Billah. And all in the name of my family. If you really want to be with your family, you will find a way to do it. And you put them first instead of this dunya. Go back and look at it again and think. Think. Allah said, O oh, you who believe, save yourself and your family from a fire, a fire that even the stones are on fire. Even the people in it are on fire. This is from the Quran. Allah is not joking. He's telling you something serious.